how's everything there with with uh, what's going on? You guys are uh, holding up. New York and California are very similar with what's going on politically, lifestyle-wise. You guys have the nicer weather, and it's just kind of the stuff in the middle is very different. So we're on the beach, you're on the beach. I think it's the same vibes. Completely, yeah. Well, thank you for taking the time, and thank you for waiting for me. I appreciate that. <laughs> My pleasure. Congratulations on this new album. I've heard that it's been done for a while, but it sounds very fresh. It sounds very now. And I have so many questions about that, if I can ask. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Great album title aside. Did you know outright that you were going to be working with Marty? Um, after we did the demo together of Rescue Me, which is the first song that we wrote together, yes, I felt like this is the way I want to go. This is the person I want to work with. Marty's been a friend of mine since I was 20 years old. So he kind of, we started writing together for the first record when I moved over here from Australia. And then um, what happened was we reconnected and we did some stuff together for Heaven This Hell. We actually did a song called Sexy Bazaar with Steven Tyler, who did the you know, duet with me on that track. And then, you know, we ended up just hanging out and jamming together in Maui with Alice Cooper and whatnot, because he's always with, you know, hanging out with Steven and Aerosmith guys. So, yeah, when I got in the studio with him, I just felt the vibe was right. Um, and we made the whole record in 28 days. So, you know, it was pretty vibed and not overthought. And I definitely just wanted to create sort of a different sound. It's not a complete departure from my past records, but it definitely, you know, has like electronic vibes. It has... Mm -hmm. um, rock pop you know there's so many different things going on with this record um but um ultimately you know it's got some pop songs in there as well with sorry mm -hmm. the next single and and um but yeah i definitely felt that that it was the right direction as soon as we we did rescue me the first uh, demo you answered a lot of what i was about to ask which is that this new album does have different genres it does have different feels you give into some of the pop stuff but a lot of it sounds like it's a power trio writing in the room together so how many songs did you pare it down from um we had a couple of others too we're working on but ultimately that was it sort of thing like because we went in there and it's funny because i had some ideas like I bought with me from LA, my home studio, which is just the electronic kind of stuff I put together on Logic GarageBand. It's like GarageBand platform with Logic right. input because it's easier for me to use. I'm terrible with like all that kind of stuff, but I love engineering stuff. And so coming up with beats and then adding that to the real recordings and we added splice and then mix things up and put real drums and bass and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. I mean, it was just an interesting process, really the whole thing, you know, it really was. And, and um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for people to hear the whole album and I hope they dig it. <laughs> you know, it's, it's not too different from having the cell, I believe. I think it's kind of a, that what I should do next. And then I've got something else right now I'm working on that should be the next record. So it's just, you know, people are like seven years to make a new record. It's like, no, no, no. <laughs> In between <laughs> that, there's a solo record, but I did do the RSO record and I have been collaborating with different artists and writing yeah. and doing an animated movie and just different things. And, yeah, playing shows and stuff like that, so. Yeah, if you really go through all your different listings on IMDb and all music, it's clear that you never stopped working. It's just a ton of things come out in a three month period, and then there's a little bit of quiet and, and so forth. But going back to that album, you always have, you personally always have that extra level of pressure in that the chorus has to be good, the song has to be good, the riff has to be good, but there always has to be that great solo. So I'm curious, when in the process of putting together the song, does the solo come together? Um, probably the end, because I kind of hear what this whole song kind of sounds like, and I don't want to do something that's just too shreddy or just, you know, and sometimes yeah. it calls for that at the end of the song, but usually the middle, the main solo is structured and I go on a vibe, like even company or any stuff like that. It's funny, the company solo was just like one or two takes, because I, I could hear it in my head. Yeah, I could hear the melody in my head, so I did it. Same with Contagious. I said, I said to Marty, I can hear a, wh a whammy pedal. Do you have a whammy pedal? And so everyone was like scavenging around the studio and we a whammy pedal somewhere. And um, that solo was done within a couple of takes as well because I knew exactly what I wanted to do. And yeah, it's kind of weird like that. So, um, you know, it definitely is about structure and whatnot, but then there's other songs like Blow or like Sinner's Hymn where the first solo was more rhythmic right it's more like kind of 
it's got that kind of Hendrix, you know, band of gypsies vibe where it's just like, you know what I mean? And then, it, and then it goes off at the end. But, um, I approached every solo differently, but yeah, you know, it's funny a long time ago when he hit cold for doing session work, everyone wanted the beat it solo done in a different way on their record. <laughs> and I would turn down so much stuff. Cause I'm like, I am not doing a tapping guitar solo or, you know, it's just to me, it became like a gimmick or something like that. And I, I was just like, I don't know. It, it felt weird to me, like for my spirit. And I stopped actually playing the beat it solo for people. <laughs> I refuse now. It's weird. Cause there was just way too many videos out there of me doing it than the actual person who did it, you know, and, and yeah. the rest of the piece, Eddie. And, but it just became such a freaking uh, gimmick and everything. And, and I was just like, no way. So same with like guessing on people's records. I'm like, well, if you want a melodic solo, I'm, like that. I'm a blues bass player. Yes. Blues rock, blues rock bass player predominantly. So I'm not like, you know, and, and that's the thing. So with, with this record, it's kind of got that sort of vibe to it. I think like more, you know, in that sort of sense, um, less shreddy, more sort of blues rock. I don't know if you agree with that, but yeah. I, I agree with that. that. The, the yeah. word that I'm going to use that's a compliment is concise, uh, <laughs> okay. where it's impressive, but it's not too much. It's not like Shrapnel Records, best of 1989, but at the same time, it's a better guitar solo than anything Kurt Cobain did. Would you agree oh. with that? <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> Sure. So when we think about you as an artist, you're one of those people who five different people know from five different things. Some people know the top 40 hits from way back when. Some people know the side person work. Some people know, hey, that's the person from um, the Michael Jackson movie and all that work and all that. But is the goal of yours long term to have this dual career where sometimes you're playing with other artists and sometimes you're the solo artist? Or is really the goal to be the person out front from now on? Both, you know, honestly, it always has been from day one because I love being the guitar player. There's way less pressure. I don't have to, you know, overlook everything. You know, when you when you uh, kind of uh, are, are the captain of the ship, so to say, when you, when you do your own thing, so much more pressure and it's insane. And I, I think a lot of people when, you know, being the front person and, and, and having your own band that you employ and then the whole, the tour bus and the tour manager and then the, all that, I've yeah. that for years and, that's it can become very exhausting because you know there's a lot of stuff that goes into that and you have to be on you do, you do all the interviews you do everything the band you know they get to chill out so i like i like it when i mean honestly um and i get it from both standpoints too because being even part of the alice cooper band too you know yeah. alice was doing all the interviews and doing all this kind of stuff doing you know it's like all this stuff before the record before sorry before the uh, show and then we were out um you know, shopping and walking around and doing stuff. I mean, although I was doing some solo gigs um, a lot of the time on the tour with Alice because I had my own, I had Heaven in the Hell out at that time. But still, it was a much easier gig when you are just a guitar player or, you know, because you just, you show up and you make sure the show is 100% perfect and that's all I cared about. As long as the show went well, that's all I cared about. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's very different. But as to answer your question, I'm definitely about doing both. And right now it's about putting out this record, doing the best I can with it, promoting it, all that kind of stuff during this pandemic, because it's a crazy time for anyone to put out music, but it's also helping people, I guess, entertainment wise, um, to have new material come out. Yeah. Obviously, I love it because I'm, you know, when I'm working out or walking, whatever it is, and or listening you know, on my stereo, I like to turn on new stuff on iTunes and hear any music so so it's a great thing to to have that during this time but music is is very undervalued and i hope that our things change with that as well because the fact that as musicians we make and everybody i'm not talking about people just starting out as musicians that have been touring for a very long time um make their money out on the road right make a lot of things happen out on the road and that's how we do it and um and and nowadays it's like being on our phones and doing everything this, this way is very difficult. And I did a live stream at the whiskey not too long ago and we sang uh, and we played to like five cameramen <laughs> and that was, you know, that was kind of a little weird, but um, yeah, I hope things change really soon. Cause I can't wait to, to start playing some shows for people for sure with this new record. And you just kindly told me that the goal is really to have all these different projects and sometimes be the person out front, sometimes be the featured player. Who's the person that you look to most as 
the role model for that kind of career. My guess would be that you're the Steve Vai kind of person. That's who you're looking at. Well, I love Steve. He's a great friend of mine. He's like an uncle to me. You know, I've known Steve since I was 14 years old and oh. he's so diverse. Yeah, he, the first the first gig I actually had, um, well, professional gig, was because I was playing in cover bands, but was opening for Steve Vai when I was 14, right? And I signed my first management contract when I was 14. And then I opened for ZZ Top when I was 16 around Australia, then Santana when I was 18. And then, you know, just built sort of a career in Australia and then saved up money. And then my, my, my mom and dad were, were pretty supportive, you know, of me, were very supportive of me, you know, doing what I'm doing. Um, a crazy daughter who quit school at 15 and said, I'm going to, you know, have a platinum record around the world and own a Cadillac and tour the world. And, you know, and they were like, okay, sure. Like, you know, they thought I was so dedicated because I had like three cover bands going and that's all I cared about was music. Right. So, um, yeah, I moved over to America and I was like 20 and started making my record, got signed to Jimmy Iving because I made a record at home when I was 18 years old. Um, played everything on it, drums, bass, programmed it, recorded it all you know, just stayed in my studio and um, that really got me, you know, a deal and then demonstrated the NAMM show with Pori Smith Guitars and, and all of that. So it's been, you know, it's been a real journey. I mean, every, every step of the way and the people that have supported me, um, you know, like the Steve Byers or Santana or, you know, Billy Gibbons and all these different people that I've known, you know, and um, from when I was really young means the world to me because, um, you know, having that support gives you confidence, you know, to get better and better. And I never stop learning and trying to better myself. So, yeah, I don't take anything for granted. And I think that with music, um, you know, such a healer, it's such a, um, you're kind of at service to people once you realize that and once you recognize that when you take on the role of being an artist and creating songs and everything, you're not just writing it for yourself, but you're writing it to help other people as well. And, and um, I pay it attention to that a lot of the time and and i make sure it's the best it can be every song and everything because um you know it's art it's something you put out in the world it's not just going out into the air at the concert you know when you're doing a record it's going it's going on something forever so you want it to be good not not crappy is there a lot of life for you outside of music a lot of life um yeah i mean i love cooking i'm a real, I love running. There's a lot of different things I'm really interested in. And, and I've started painting as well. And, and um, you know, yeah, for sure. I think I'm going to do a, probably a cooking show pretty soon because I'm, I'm quite obsessed by cooking. I'm, I'm half Greek. So, you know, we grew up in the kitchen <laughs> at five. You know, my grandma stirring pots and, and learning how to do things and, and uh, be good housewives. <laughs> <That's kind> <laughs> of, <laughs> I learned still to overfeed people. You know, when people don't eat, you, you know, it's like, why are you eating? <laughs> so <laughs> that's, uh, that's kind of what, that's kind of what I do when I'm not, when I'm not creating music is, is cook for people. So, uh, and I enjoy it. I really do. So why not make a crazy cooking show later or soon? Who knows? Uh, on the, on the Greek end, this is something I've gotten a lot of different answers for. Is it pronounced gyro or gyro? Uh, it's called gyros. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> see, New Yorkers, you ask them and they say gyros and everyone else everywhere says gyros. Gyros, yeah, it's gyros. <laughs> well, that's how I said it in Australia. And <clears throat> my uh, grandparents came off a boat, actually, from, from Greece. So I learned how to speak Greek when I was like five, six years old. And some of it was pretty broken Greek, though, too, because later on they started learning English. So some words got a bit mixed up. So when I do speak to people from Greece, they're like, what are you talking about? <laughs> what language is that? So, yeah, but, um, yeah, I mean, as I said, I, I love, I love cooking. So cooking show soon. Yeah, I, I really do hope that happens. Well, three quick questions and then you're free. And the first one, have you ever spoken Greek with Tommy Lee? No, I met uh, Tommy Lee at the MJ rehearsals, Michael Jackson rehearsals. I was rehearsing next door and he came in and um, I remember him, he said, congratulations on getting the gig. And because of my Aussie accent, he started bouncing around like a kangaroo in my hand. It was really funny. And that's kind of the extent of our conversation. But, uh, you know, um, yeah, honestly, I'm a fan of Motley Crue. And I'd actually left Alice Cooper just before the Motley Crue tour. Um, but Nikki Six wrote a song with me and Marty on this new record. So, Yeah, Marty just... 
the credits are unbelievable, yet he's always been in the background. You know, what a modest guy. <laughs> you know, written some of Hard Rock's biggest songs in the last 20 years. And just what does Marty look like? I don't know. Yeah, no, honestly, um, writing with Nikki Six and him standing through the lyrics for Stream of Consciousness right on the record, that was really cool, you know, because Nikki just called me and said, I have these lyrics for you. And, and that was wild. And we just put music around it. And, and honestly, yeah, I was really happy with the way that song turned out. So, and honored that he wanted to, you know, work with, with me. So, a positive Nikki Six experience. Okay, well, next question Best TV show of the moment? Best TV show. Gosh, I've just been watching um, right now. Oh my God. Um, at night time, I watch kind of stupid TV sometimes. So it can be like, whether it be Two and a Half Men or Big Bang Theory or whatever the hell's on at the time. But um, when it comes to series, I like to look up different documentaries and stuff like that, especially right now I'm watching the First Lady documentaries of like you know, Michelle Obama to Hillary Clinton to, you know, um, Jackie O, that kind of stuff. So I'm watching that right now, which is interesting because I'm learning a lot about politics and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's interesting to me. And, and uh, what else was I watching the other day? God, I mean, anything that's sort of interesting on, on Netflix, I was watching a really good, I don't know if it's a document, maybe it's a documentary movie called Phenomenon. It's about UFOs. Um, <laughs> I like stuff like that, like alien stuff. So yeah, it's like this TV, it's like, a, it's a show. I don't know what you would call it. I think it's a documentary series, uh, but yeah. Go check it out. It's actually really good. It's scary, but it's kind of scary. <laughs> well, you've got great taste outside of music, and we're learning food is also a specialty of yours. So very interesting person, to say the least. So my closer, any last words for the kids? Um, yeah, I just want to actually thank everyone for um, you know support and love over the years, and uh, to all the kids that are you know wanting to start music and are into music right now, never give up. Keep on writing, keep on doing what you do. Um, get yourself a good lawyer if you want to come into this industry <laughs> um, at first. And then surround yourself with great people. And, and honestly, the world needs more healing art right now. So I think that there's going to be a surge of great albums coming out of this time. So, um, but I, you know what I mean? It's, I, I'm, I'm a big supporter of, of young musicians, always have been. Um, and uh, my advice just to keep on going and keep playing, keep rocking, never give up. And don't let anyone tell you you can't do it because I was told that many, many times as a kid. So, yeah. Makes sense to me. Thank you so much for your time. Congratulations on this great new record. Hope the next one comes out sooner than six years from now. <laughs> but yeah, look I forward I to you <laughs> live in New York when things get normal again. I'd uh, love, love to, absolutely. Well, you take care and thank you so much. For Thanks, Corey. Have a good one. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Outro cast.